Well, what a joy it is to just walk out of the neighborhood and into the Wedgwood Urban Garden here in Nashville, Tennessee. And I'm with Christina Bentrup, the garden coordinator here. Hi, Christina. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. So it's just an open garden here for the neighborhood? Uh, it is. We have a perennial herb and flower garden that takes up the size of a pretty standard city lot. And anyone from the neighborhood is welcome to come and hang out and pick flowers or herbs, pull a few weeds if they wanted to, but not required, and just enjoy this space that's created for the neighbors. Well, it's just beautiful. I'm seeing mint and cone flowers. What else do we have here? Well, we're passing by our summer corn planting, which will also be available to the neighbors. We just walked by some rosemary and lemongrass down below. Oregano, thyme, horseradish, chives, cat mint, a few cherry tomatoes, eggplant and peppers down here just for fun. Pineapple sage, regular sage, lavender, yarrow, you name it. We've got a nice mix of plants here. Well, I work for an organization called the Nashville Food Project, and we manage this garden and another space where we bring people together to grow, cook, and share food with the goal of cultivating community and alleviating hunger in our city. So we do that by bringing volunteers into every facet of our program. So volunteers help to grow this garden, they help to grow our other garden, they help to process all the food coming out of our gardens. They help to cook it, send it out on our meal trucks. They help deliver meals into neighborhoods around Nashville where people need access to good, healthy food. Um, and all along the way, we're trying to bring as many people from as many walks of life together to do that. The property goes much further back. We have about an acre and a half up the hillside here in production. Uh, we are very production focused and we also house two community gardens in the upper space. Well, I saw some people headed up there. Let's go see what they're doing. Great. Well, pollination is important in any garden and looks like you have a lot of pollination plants here. We do. We think a lot about the bees in this garden because we want to have good pollination and we're worried about the bee crisis all over the world right now. So I try to always have something flowering for the bees. Here, for example, we have a couple of different kinds of dill and several flowers intentionally planted in the center of the garden so that the pollinators come in, as well as the other beneficial insects that help us with our organic pest control. So if we bring in beneficial predator insects, we don't have to worry so much about the bad insects eating our crops. Oh, that's fantastic. And speaking of crops, it looks like you really started here with your production gardens. Yes, um, here we have 200 bell peppers. Um, those start coming in to fruiting full production in July. We'll harvest those for our meals program. Um, and we also have over here our garlic crop, our okra. We've harvested a lot of kale and getting ready to plant in the next summer round of summer crops. What a great mixture. Yes, our spring crops came in really well this year. They love the weather and um, the chard should produce good for another month or so. And then um, we'll harvest it fully and do another crop following a careful rotation scheme that we have. And beyond that, you have potatoes that you're growing. Mm -hmm. Irish potatoes, uh, 76 tomato plants. We have winter squash, butternut squash. We have lima beans and the climbing French green beans. Wow, what a great amount of uh, variety that you have here. Now, I see some people working today. Yeah, um, also in this space, as well as producing crops for our kitchens, we house two community gardens. One community garden has a refugee focus, and we were able to get a grant from the federal government to facilitate that for the next three years. We'll have groups of refugees from different countries who were most likely farmers in their home country and have been resettled in Nashville but don't have access to land. Um, so we're able to share a good chunk of our land with them so that they can grow food for themselves, for their families, and become better integrated into our community. Well, and I imagine there's going to be some amount of garden learning you're gonna have when you move from one climate to another. Yeah, it's actually an incredible sharing learning experience because I am able to teach them about what's done well for me here in Tennessee, but they've also brought crops with them that I've never heard about. They have their own way of doing things that are often just so different I didn't even think about it. And so we've, we've been learning a lot from each other.
What fun. Now, I know you have these other community plots for local people as well. Yeah, we do. We have nine plots this year just behind us um, for neighborhood residents who don't have access to some of the other community gardens in town. So we really recruited for that community garden at the local elementary school, Fall Hamilton, um, where we also do veggie tastings with the kids and um, do some educational programming as well. Now this is a huge garden and you've got a lot of people working in a lot of variety and of course the question that really comes up is how are you watering it? Well that is a great question. <laughs> um, over the years you know we have a really different, uh, so, some years are incredibly wet, some years are very dry and so we've decided to kind of even out the surplus of water when it comes in bulk in the spring and dries up in the summer by harvesting a lot of those early spring rains. Um, in rain barrels to uh, irrigate our crops in the summer when it's really hot. So we have 4,000 gallons of rainwater storage around this garden, which was calculated to be enough to water most of our crops through an averagely dry summer. Of all the methods that you teach people here, I see a real mixture of plants and, well, what all are you doing? Well, we try to use the best practices of organic and sustainable agriculture. We think a lot about soil health, ecosystem health, um, habitat for the neighboring insects, birds, bees. So we are completely organic. We try to grow all our own fertilizers on the property. We do a lot of, we make our own compost. We partner with some local restaurants that bring their compostables to us. We use compost teas. We make teas out of stinging nettle and comfrey. We do a lot of companion planting. And we try to keep um, happy plants. And the healthier the plants are, just like us, um, the less likely they are to be attacked by insects or by disease or anything that might not be so good for them. Oh, certainly, and I see you have a chicken coop. You have your own beehives. Yeah, we have a real diversity of things happening here. It's, it's an incredible space. Um, we have obviously all of our annual vegetables all over the property. We also have a lot of perennial fruit trees. We have black raspberries and blackberries and strawberries and blueberries and cranberries. Just think of a berry, we have it. <laughs> um, and it's really great to have both the perennial and annual agriculture here together. Well, what a fantastic project. Now, what are you looking at next? Are you expanding? Well, uh, that's a great question. We don't have secure land tenure at any of the spots we grow on. And there are, the, the community gardens have been such a success that we really hope to find a secure piece of land that we can grow on both for production, for our kitchens, to get that out to Nashvillians who need good food, but also space for people who want to grow their own food to be able to do that, whether it's refugees or community gardeners or one of the many other groups that we've worked with. Well, this is just a fantastic experience. Thank you so much for sharing it with us and of course for sharing it with all of our neighbors from around the world right here in the middle of a neighborhood in Nashville. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.